Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. We are in our last portion of scripture. By the way, the plus side to this one is the font is bigger. Um, my dad bought it for me. I think he, he knew what was coming. You know, uh, it's kind of messed up, but it's, it's true. So Ephesians 3, and we're going to be in verses 14 through 21. And Paul is wrapping up the first three chapters of deep theology and doctrine and beliefs and understanding of Jesus with a prayer. And he started off with a praise song, a, a hymn and a praise of, a hymn of praise to God. And then he prays. And then now he's doing the same thing. He's going to pray and then close with a brief doxology, a hymn. And so Paul does a lot of praying in his writings. And this is a beautiful, beautiful scripture. Uh, to be honest with you, this can be... Uh, it can hit so many people in different ways and apply to you in so many different ways. As you'll see today, a main topic of our scripture is love. And the transition that it seems like Paul is trying to do here is he's, he's appealing to the church to know the love and the strength of God. And the only thing I can think of is why he's doing this is because what's coming next in chapters four through six is going to require the strength and love of God to live it out. If, you, if you're just joining us, just so you know, uh, this is our eighth week in Ephesians. and the first three chapters, Paul develops this letter and he structures it in such a way that the beginning of the letter, the first three chapters, are deep understandings of Christ and what he's done for us. And out of that understanding, out of believing these things that Jesus has done for you, then you know how to live. And there's going to be spiritual warfare coming up in our teaching. There's going to be tests and trials that you're going to see in the scripture. There's going to be ways that God's going to stretch us, stretch our ability to, to follow him or love him. But the thing is, is he, and, and love one another. But the thing is, he gives us the power to do that at the same time. So what it is, what, how does God stretch people? Well, he puts them in situations they have to be stretched. And how do, we, how do we know that what we believe is true? We have to be put in situations that you test what you believe to be true. So Paul's up getting ready to get there, but before that happens, he prays for the church. And so I will even pray this same scripture over us today. So I'm going to read it, and then I'll break down the verses for you, and, and then we'll move in. So Ephesians 3, verse 14. When I think of all this... I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power. This is, a, a, this is just a fantastic verse. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. Can I just pause one second and say, you are loved in such a way that you cannot even measure it. God loves you so much, you cannot even measure his love. It's, it's an amazing, immeasurable love. Verse 19, may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And then here's his little praise closing. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. That is a rich text of, at the same time, if we're not careful, we'll miss the simplicity of it. That there is infinite strength and love 
in God. And he starts off in verse 14 with this. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. Paul is thinking about everything he just penned and wrote in the previous chapters. He's thinking about the blessings of Jesus Christ. He's thinking about how the unity that's been brought through Jesus, the lives that are changed through the gospel and to the point where he literally falls to his knees to pray. Now, in, in typical times of Paul's life, and when he would usually pray, they would stand. And in this time, many people would stand and pray with their hands lifted up to the heavens. That was the typical posture of prayer. But not this time. Because Paul was pleading to God for the church. Paul was on his knees, desperate for the church to grasp his strength and his love and that they would lean into Jesus and Jesus would be to dwell in their hearts and he would live in their hearts. So Paul is on his knees and he's getting ready to pray these amazing things. But here's what's interesting is Paul is praying out of what he just wrote and he's thinking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what's making him pray. And he's thinking about what the church really needs is they need more of Jesus and they need his strength and his love. And so he's praying out of this place of, of writing these all down. And he's so overwhelmed by his own writings that he's, he's on his knees. And of course, this was inspired by God, right? So God's given him uh, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit over him to write what he's writing. And so he's overwhelmed by it and he's praying. How many of you have prayed for your kids in a desperate way? You know what I'm talking about. Maybe a friend or, or a family member. Or maybe it's a neighbor. How about our world? Anyone's prayers for the world increase recently? Our world. I'm, I'm, I'm de- it's, I mean, there's so many things our world needs, but our world needs Jesus. You know, our world needs to know that, that his love for them is greater than they could ever even measure or imagine. And Paul knows that that's extremely important. He says, may our, I said, may our prayers be prompted, inspired by the word of God and the gospel. This is important to me because I feel like there's times in my life where I've prayed out of my circumstances, but not out of the word of God. But when I'm in the word and I'm praying for people and Paul's in the word and he's praying, what he prays is what God wants him to pray. You know, and I want to pray for my kids and my family and this church out of the word. So when I read this scripture today, what I've been doing all week is I've been praying these words for Calvary and for all Christians around the world. This is my prayer for our church. Well, he goes on to say this. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Some versions may say inner being. Uh, By the way, inner strength or inner being and heart are synonymous. And so is the spirit of Christ or the Holy Spirit. They're synonymous. When biblical writers say those two things, they're meaning the same things. So the heart or the inner being, the soul, they're referring to the same. He's praying that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. This this is interesting to me. God has unlimited resources, and what does Paul pray for? Now, we live in America, right? So we're thinking, hey, Paul, can you pray for a few more stimulus checks? (laughs) No. No. Can you pray for no more suffering? Now that, that would be a good one, right? Mm-mm. Paul prays for inner strength through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because we will have troubles in this world, but take heart, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. We're going to need the strength, and that strength comes from the Holy Spirit. You won't find that in your cereal. Everyone knows Wheaties worked for like Michael Jordan. That's about it. (laughs) Second Corinthians 
chapter 4. I like to read this in verse 16 through 18. It says, that is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. That's, that's how, while, while our bodies are wasting away from the day, you know, you know what? that's kind of sad if you think about it. The day that we're born, we are aging. But, but here's, the, here's the plus side. As believers, the spirit of God is being renewed every single day and growing every day. Yeah. Yes, thank God for that. So you are, your physical body may be in pain and weak, but Paul's saying, but what's important is your inner strength through the Holy Spirit. Your spirit is strong for what's ahead. He goes on to say this, for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Praise God for that verse. We need that verse. We need that scripture to remind us. So Paul's saying, you need the inner strength of God. And I'm praying that his spirit empower, empowers you with the inner strength of God inside here from the core. Verse 17, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. There's, this is an interesting way of laying out this verse and this version. I do believe it, it would be better if it said, trust in him, then Christ will make his home in your hearts. But the NLT version flips it. But the point is, as you trust in him, Christ will make his home in your hearts, is what it's trying to say. So in order to have a relationship with Christ, we must put our faith in him and trust in him. But there's a reason why it's like this also. Because... Paul isn't talking about just a salvation trust and that's it. He's talking about a faith in Christ that continues. So Christ makes his home in your life. And yes, at salvation, he comes in, but he wants you to continue to trust him. He wants us to continue to trust him. And the disciples, they knew exactly what Jesus meant because they were going to be tested and tried and, and that one moment of salvation was powerful, but they needed to continue to trust in Christ to show up. And it's the same thing for us. And this is what happens when we do. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. There is a correlation here. There is a progression that Christ makes his home in your hearts as you trust in him. And then you grow into God's love and then God's love keeps you strong. Now, this is all happening in your life spiritually by faith. But you will experience it physically as you live for Christ and you find that you're strong and that God's love is keeping you intact. Now, John 14, 23, I thought about this verse immediately as I was reading it. It says, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them. And we will come and make our home with each of them. Now, what, who, what, who's the we? It's actually the Trinity. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit will make their home in us. Right now, you are a home. We've been learning this in the first three chapters. You are a home, a dwelling for the presence of God. He's with you. When we trust in Jesus, he makes himself a home in our hearts because Jesus doesn't come and go. He's there to stay. Jesus came to stay with you. Jesus didn't just say, you know, hey, I'm here and I'll, I'll see you later. No, he wants to have a relationship with you. And as that relationship grows deeper and deeper and deeper, your, your understanding of God and your strength and your love grows as well. And we have to feed that relationship with trust and knowing Christ more, reading the word and praying, we water that and the root grows down deeper and deeper. And, we, and then there's, you know, there's a lot of, 
a lot of people think that the, the main way you grow closer to God is through reading the Bible and prayer. But you will hear in my Close to God devotional series, I believe it's tomorrow, this next one, that there's other ways that God grows you and, and puts those roots deep down in. And I'll just give you a little sneak peek. You ready? It's going to be on, on YouTube tomorrow. But when we serve God, it grows us. Because he will ask us to do some things that stretch us. Because it's one thing to read the word, it's another thing to apply it. And so a lot of knowledge is great, but knowledge not applied, it's just kind of wasted. And so there's just a little sneak peek of the devotional. But there's a challenge for us to keep him at the center of our hearts, to reign, teach, love, feed, and guide us. And this relationship produces God's love and strength. In other words, the more of Christ in you, the stronger you are. The more love you experience of God. And I, I have a question for all of us, even myself. Does Jesus reside in our lives, in your life? Is he your source of strength? The reason why I'm asking that is because what dwells in our hearts is what we become. What we allow to take ownership of our home, what we allow to live in our hearts and minds, what we allow to occupy here and here is what we become. And I want more of Jesus in me. And I got to tell you something. When I was studying this, I had, a, I had something that came to my mind, and I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit with it. There is a human philosophy, new age teaching, that you will find your strength from within. Paul does not teach that here. Paul is saying, because some people will misinterpret the scripture, and then we even butcher it on purpose to teach you. See, the Bible teaches new age teaching. No. Paul is saying it's through the Holy Spirit in you that you find inner strength in your inner being. Paul is very aware that he would not have the strength in his own human capabilities to do what he has to do. Paul is very aware that mankind cannot find inner strength from ourselves because we are the weak vessels. It's actually very prideful to think that. And it doesn't even last, let's be honest. Well, it's time to go back to that thinking, isn't it? I had a really rough week. I guess I ran out of inner strength. Yes, you did, because you cannot find that strength in your own body or heart. The strength that you're looking for that is eternal, that will never run out, is Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. If, you. if you try to meditate and find inner strength in yourself, you haven't tasted anything yet. Jesus Christ, his spirit, his presence is much greater than any human spirit that we can conjure up in ourselves, any kind of human power or whatever it is. I'm telling you right now, there's nothing like the power of Jesus Christ. There's nothing like him. <clears throat> and over time, by the way, Jesus grows as you continue to follow Jesus, as you continue to trust him through every circumstance. This past year, wow, my relationship with Christ grew because I had to. It was either going to go backwards or it was going to go forward. That was it. I mean, maybe stalemate, maybe. But let me tell you something. If you're not growing, you're usually not just plat plateauing. You're usually declining. And, and Jesus doesn't decline. Jesus doesn't plateau. Jesus is alive and he thrives and anyone who, who trusts in him throughout every circumstance is going to thrive. I'm not saying we're perfect, but Jesus is perfect and he lives in us. So perhaps we did have a rough year. It's all good. Lamentations 3 says, his mercies are new every day. Tomorrow you can start all over. How about right now you start all over and you trust in Jesus and let him change you. 
All right, here's this, this scripture of love that is really hard to grasp. And may you have the power to understand. So we need, we need the power of Jesus Christ to understand this. As all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. God doesn't love me. Are you kidding me? We can't even measure how much God loves you. You, you just got, a, if, at salvation, you got a taste of his love. It just grows and gets bigger and bigger. It's just amazing. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. So the portion that, of God's love that we get to experience is Jesus. But even Jesus, we're going to experience more of that as we trust in him and follow him. Then you will be made complete. Ooh, I want to be made complete. I'm tired of my weakness. I'm tired of getting frustrated. I'm tired of being tired. I want to be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Oh, there it is. Power that comes from God, not ourselves. And I always joke about the coffee. I love some coffee. But it wears out. <laughs> When I went to Dominican Republic for a mission trip, they had the best coffee. And uh, when I came home, our coffee didn't stand a chance. I mean, I need like three cups for one cup in Dominican Republic. It was funny. But I can't depend on worldly things or myself or earthly things. I need the power of God. Why? Again, he's getting ready to tell them in the next three chapters to love people. <laughs> to fight against spiritual warfare, to stand against it. So he's getting us ready to understand all of that. It's important to Paul that the church grasp what they can of God's vast and endless love. And we can grasp Jesus Christ, a, a portion of Jesus. We can grasp him through reading the scripture from salvation, his Holy Spirit coming into us. It's important that we, that we grasp what we can and we can experience it through Jesus Christ. And this is what an unknown author, I don't know who wrote it. I saw it in a commentary. I loved it. It says, in a word, to know the love of Christ, this is what it is. It is might and weakness. It is patience in tribulation or trials and struggles. It is strength for living. It is hope in dying. It is heaven brought down to earth. It is heaven dwelling within the soul. That is to have uh, an idea, a portion of God's love here on earth. And the grand purpose and result of knowing the love of Christ, you and I will be complete with the life, power, and love of God. Amen. I want to give you an example of, for me, how I've experienced God's love. And I the early church fathers, they kind of, they looked at either Paul was talking about the building, the temple, and how, how wide and how far it was extending and how high it was. And then some early church fathers, they looked at the cross as an example. Maybe, maybe Paul was talking about the cross since it was a perfect demonstration of God's love. And so I, I use the cross personally. And I've experienced God in all four directions. And maybe your word are going to be different than my words. But... The reason why I picked these is because I've experienced God's love when serving those in need. I've experienced the compassion of God. I've been serving people and helping those that are poor and needy and just crying because I felt the love of God pouring into me to come out of me. I've seen compassion in other countries or here that move me and go, that's, that's the love of God right there. And then on the left is the provision of God. On the other hand, nailed to the cross, he was giving his love to us. He was giving his wisdom, his power, his provision. I've seen God even financially bless my family and friends. I've seen God provide strength in times of need. So you have the other hand, God's love providing, and the other one, compassion. How many of you know what I'm talking about? God's love shown in the form of provision. And then I've been in places and moments of worship 
and reading the word while I could, I could feel God's presence just go down my spine. Or when I was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit and prayed in a language I did not know, I felt the peace and the joy and the presence of God that I can't explain. And every time I'm refilled, I feel it again. It it could be in worship here. It could be, I mean, when we're baptizing people in water, I feel the presence of God moving. That's God's love. That's God's presence. That's that vertical relationship. But then in my darkest moments in life, in times where I, I regret decisions I've made or I've hurt people, in the dark moment of my life, you know what I felt? <clears throat> I felt his conviction. You're like, wait, you felt his conviction? That, that hurts. It does because God loves me. And the Bible says he disciplines those he loves. He disciplines, right? (laughs) And what's amazing is, is when you come to the foot of the cross, all broken and messed up and made bad choices, guess what you, guess what you find? Not condemnation. You find mercy. See, and and, and every time you do, that's what you find. But because of that, it, it changes how often you keep going to that part of the, of the love of God. And next thing you know, you're, just, you're staying up here. And you're up here. And, and now you're serving. And you're, you're reaching out. You're giving. And you're showing compassion. And, and his presence is there. But you know that his mercy is there too. But you have grown so close to him. And you know he loves you so much that you don't frequent that part of the cross as much. But if you had to, guess what's there? His mercy and forgiveness. You can't stop. I mean, you, you can't stop the, the love of God. You, he doesn't run out. And, and the same thing here. Every time I give out my life to someone, God provides more for me to give. Every time I'm showing love to my kids, God gives me more love to give. It's beautiful. Because here's the thing. The endless love of God lives in you. And again, we can't even measure or grasp how good God's love is. He loves you so much. I have a couple of scriptures, but we're running out of time. You, you want to look these up. This is about the woman who goes to the feet of Jesus and washes his feet with expensive perfume. And the Pharisee inside of his heart and mind is judging her and judging Jesus and saying, if you would only know who this woman is, how evil or how sinful she is. You wouldn't let her touch you. And Jesus answers him and says, she loves me because she's been forgiven much, so she loves much. At the feet of Jesus, at the foot of the cross, you're gonna find God's love. And in Romans 8, 35 through 39, we always have time to read the word, right? The other one's a pretty long story, but this one, let me read this to you. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? This is Paul, by the way. So it's fitting that he would write this too. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? That's interesting. God doesn't love me. I'm having troubles and calamity. That's not true. Or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death. Does it mean he no longer loves me if I'm, if I'm going through all those things? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There it is. In order to experience that love, you need Jesus. And it's powerful. So he ends with this. Now all glory to God. So he's praising God again because of what he's even praying who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. 
Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. So we, they call this a, doc, a doxology. It's a short song of praise to glorify God. Paul does that a lot in his writings. And the word that Paul uses in Greek for infinitely or immeasurably more is a really hard word to pronounce. It means superabundance. <laughs> I have, I've been striking out on trying to pronounce some of the Greek transliterated words. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, it means superabundance. Like b abundance is already like a lot. Times that by superabundance. Paul is saying, you, you just can't measure it. You just can't measure it. I love what F.F. Bruce said. He's a famous uh, Greek and Hebrew scholar. He says, it is impossible to ask God for too much. His capacity for giving far exceeds his people's capacity for asking or even imagining. Now, why would Paul pray this? Again, because Paul's next three chapters is going to take the strength of God, which he gives us through the Holy Spirit. It's going to take the strength of God. Let me close with some thoughts. Our strength comes from God. And his strength is infinitely greater than every struggle we face on this earth. I mean, we've been through it. And people in other countries have been through it. You've been through it. Your neighbors have been through it. Do they know this? Because they need to know. We just heard some sad news of one of our neighbors, and so we've been praying for them. They need to know that no matter what they go through, the strength that you can find that overcomes every struggle in this world is from God. When we're in situations that stretch our human capabilities, God's strength gets us through. Mm -hmm. God's strength gets us through. We may crumble and collapse. It may seem like we're not going to get through that week. But let me tell you, God's strength gets us through. And followers of Christ, God will lead us into situations where we'll depend on him for strength. Just want you to know that. Everyone thinks he's trying to keep, keep us. Like people teach that God's going to keep you from struggles and trials. No, Jesus guarantees it. And you're going to find out that God is stronger than the struggle. That's how you know. No one knows. If, we, if I lived in a bubble on a couch, how am I going to know? Sorry if anyone lives in a bubble on a couch. If you're watching online or anything like that. That is a struggle if you're, you're stuck in a bubble. That is a struggle. The love and completion we long for are found in Jesus. I'm, I'm saying this for a reason. Not feelings. See, feelings fade. Jesus doesn't. And I'm saying this for a reason. Because we're not going to feel like everything is going great. But Jesus is still there. He doesn't fade. Feelings, that will go away. You will have a better day. Better days are coming. But Jesus is always there no matter what. And he's that long-lasting love and strength that you can never measure. And I don't have to prove my worth or work to be loved because God's love for me is immeasurably greater than any love on this earth. Let that speak to your heart today. Have you been trying to prove your worth to your boss to one another, to a friend? Have you been working for someone's love? God loves you so much. There's so much love, you can't even measure it. Receive that today. Because if you do, you won't chase or waste your time when you're already loved that much. And you're already worth that much. And I think it's important that we know that God's resources are limitless, boundless, and capable of infinitely more than we ask or think. You know what that makes me think? That I need to stretch my prayer life. Because if God is greater and infinitely more than I can think or imagine, man, I haven't been praying right. <laughs> I need to pray with an infinite mindset and, and a boundless God who has unlimited resource. That's how I need to pray.
Amen? So church, I pray this same scripture to you. And let me, let me read it, and we're going to close. And Dorothy would be up here to share a few things with us. I think this is such a powerful prayer for us going into this next three chapters. By the way, we have a special guest next week who's ministering to Gentiles around the world. And he will be our speaker, a missionary. You'll hear more about that. And then Easter week is coming. We have our play. So we're going to be busy with that. So we're going to take a little break from our series. And, uh, and then we'll jump back into chapter four. Here's, here's what Paul prays. I pray that from his glorious, and you can close your eyes right now because we're praying this. We're, we're going to believe it. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower us with inner strength through his spirit. Do that, God. Then Christ, make your home in our hearts as we trust in you. We trust in you and nothing else in this world matters. Nothing else works. God, may our roots grow down into your love and keep us strong. And may we have the power to understand as all of us should, how wide and how long and how high and how deep your love is for us. May we experience the love of Christ though it is too great to understand fully. May we experience what we can. Then we will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Be with us as we go our separate ways today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.